Hey guys, it's Becca. Welcome back to my channel. I was really missing Disney today and I've had this video idea on my phone for several months. I just haven't gotten around to filming it. So I figured today would be the perfect day to just sit and talk Disney. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to share my top tips for planning a last minute Disney trip. I wish I was planning a last minute Disney trip right now, to be honest, but instead I'm 33 weeks pregnant. <laughs> so I'm really excited to share these tips with you guys though. So let's get started. I wanted to start by acknowledging that I know everybody's idea of a last minute Disney trip is different. For some people that could look like six months out, three months out, three weeks out. Everybody has a different idea of what last minute means. But regardless of what a last minute trip to you means, it's possible. <laughs> so I just wanted to start with that. Don't be discouraged. A last minute trip is so doable. You will have an amazing time. And I hope these tips really help you in planning your Disney trip because it's so possible to do it last minute. My first tip is to just be flexible. And I know that kind of pertains to any Disney trip, no matter what your planning process looks like, but especially on a last minute trip when you don't have that year to year and a half to plan like most people are suggesting, it's okay. Even if you don't get the tickets to that after hours event that you were hoping for, or the very merry Christmas party is all booked up for the night you were hoping, maybe the resort you were wanting to stay at is completely booked, you know, it's okay. And I think it's important to remember that it's Disney. <laughs> You're gonna have a great time no matter what. And even if you had your heart set on Port Orleans French Quarter and it has zero availability, look at staying at Port Orleans Riverside or maybe one of the value resorts or you know whatever fits in your budget, just be flexible with that. Or even look at staying off property. You know, there's always gonna be last minute availability off property. <laughs> so that's one thing to remember. If you don't see anything that you know really fits in your budget on the Disney website, look at an Airbnb or a off-property resort because you're, again, you're still gonna have a great time. So just be flexible and be okay with the fact that you may not get your ideal resort or that ticketed event that you had been dreaming of. Especially if this isn't a once in a lifetime kind of trip, know that you'll get to go back at some point eventually and you can do those things on that trip. So I think just be flexible. My next tip is to be consistent when it comes to fast passes and dining reservations. I feel like this is the area where people get really frantic and kind of lose their cool a little bit, which totally doesn't have to be the case because you can really get any dining reservation and any fast pass you're looking for, no matter how close to your trip you're planning. And I feel like a lot of people don't know this. So when it comes to dining specifically, all you have to do is just keep checking back and you have to be consistent with this. You may need to check multiple times a day, but know that especially in the couple weeks leading up to your dates, people are constantly canceling things, rearranging their itinerary, and there's brand new dining reservations being filtered back into the Disney website on a daily basis. So if you're on there and you are refreshing that page to check and see if you have your heart set on Ohana dinner, something will pop up, I guarantee it. You just have to be refreshing the page multiple times a day, ready to go. Another tip I have with dining reservations is utilize mouse dining. I will link a video where I talk about mouse dining and go into a ton of detail about it, but it's an amazing resource that basically does the work for you. You plug in which dining reservation you're looking for and it sends you a notification, a text or an email on when that dining reservation is available. And it notifies you and all you have to do is log on and there it is. You have to be really quick though. If it's that Ohana dinner, someone else is gonna be ready to go for that Ohana dinner too. So you've gotta be ready to log on and book it immediately. But mouse dining is a great resource and definitely take advantage of that if you're looking at getting some of those really popular dining reservations for a last minute Disney trip. Same thing for fast passes. So many people don't know that you can actually just keep refreshing the fast pass page to ultimately get whatever you want. Now there are some exceptions, flight of passage, slinky dog dash, you know, some of those really popular attractions that may be a bit more challenging to get those last minute, but really anything else, 
you can, I mean, even day of, I mean, you could show up to the park. And again, I have another video on my whole fast pass strategy when it comes to canceling and modifying and adjusting fast passes. And you kind of work the system a little bit. It's a whole strategy. So I'll link that. Check it out if you haven't watched it already, but it's super helpful because you kind of figure out, again, how the fast pass system works. And if you have it down, then you're really able to get whatever fast pass you want. And that 60 day, 30 day fast pass window, you know, it really doesn't matter that much because you're able to get whatever you want. At least that's what Andy and I have found. So again, be consistent with it, with dining reservations and fast passes. Don't get discouraged thinking that, you know, we're not gonna have a good time, we're not gonna get anything we want because, you know, we're planning this in a, you know, a month out and, you know, so many people just kind of avoid it because they think, man, well, we can't really make great plans, so why go at all? But that's so not the case. You can still get amazing fast passes all of the dining reservations you want, you just have to be consistent and put in the time and effort to get what you want. <laughs> My next tip is to still create a daily itinerary. Just because it's a last minute trip doesn't mean you have to wing it and just show up and not have any plans. Because again, that's so not the case. You can still make an itinerary, still plan out your days, get those dining reservations, those fast passes, plan out what parks you're gonna go to. If you're gonna park hop, you know, your transportation, I mean, plan it as if you had a year to plan. So do the exact same thing. It doesn't have to look any different just because you're planning a month out. So still put in the effort and the time to create that itinerary. And there's so many resources online that can help you with that if you don't know where to start. I have a Disney vacation planning guide. It was actually one of my very first videos that I ever filmed. I'll link it if you wanna watch it. Um, I would definitely go back if I could and kinda add things to it. But I think it's a great starting point. If you just have no idea, you know, man, what do we even do? Where do we even begin? Definitely check out that video. So again, I'll link that for you, but create the itinerary. You don't have to wing it just because it's a last minute trip. My final tip is don't get stressed. It's so easy to research everything there is to know about planning a Disney vacation and get overwhelmed. There are so many videos, there's so much content, so many blogs about this topic, and I can see how it could be very overwhelming. <laughs> so don't do that to yourself. Maybe watch a couple, you know, to get some help on creating that itinerary and kind of getting a step-by-step -step plan, but you don't have to know it all to have a great time at Disney. And don't let the planning process stress you out. So that's the thing about this, last, this whole idea of a last minute Disney trip. Don't let it stress you out. You can have a great time when you're planning a trip in three months or less. Andy and I have done it several times now where we have booked something in three months or less and we have a great vacation. I haven't viewed those trips any differently than I have on the ones where we've planned 11 months out. So again, don't be stressed. Don't overwhelm yourself with all the information because there really is a lot out there. Watch a couple things and don't overdo it, but also be prepared. So there's kind of this balance with it, but don't get stressed out. You're gonna have a great time no matter what. So those are all of my tips for planning a last minute Disney trip. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever planned a last minute trip, what last minute is for you, like how soon have you gone after booking something, and what are your best tips for planning a Disney vacation last minute. I would love to read through those. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And that is it for today. So I will see you in my next one. Bye.